What's up everyone, my name's Zane, and welcome to my results from 10 hours of bursting maniacal monkeys in the Monkey Madness 2 caves. And before we begin, I started this with 89 magic and 97 hit points, and I ended with 93 magic and 98 hit points. With all of that said though, let's go ahead and get right into the stats. So in terms of experience, the main thing to say about this is that it is by far one of the best magic training methods in the game, and also by far one of the best hit point training methods in the game at the same time. Especially when you factor in how easy it is to do this method, in that it's not especially click intensive, the results are really, really impressive. And keep in mind that at higher levels, you'd get even more experience per hour. And also keep in mind that this total experience came from me doing a lot of AFKing, you can actually get more experience than this across 10 hours at Maniacal Monkeys if you're active the entire time. As for the supply cost, people may note that there was no loot section of this video and that's because you don't get any loot from doing these, you only have supply costs instead. Our supply cost obviously came out to 820k per hour, but really that's not too bad as a higher level training method, because most high level players can make that amount of money pretty consistently anyway. But it should be noted that there are slightly slower methods of training magic like tan leather, which actually bring in a profit instead of a pure loss. So do keep that in mind, this is a method for the higher level player that wants to get their experience quickly and doesn't care about the cost. In terms of the additional stats, the first thing to point out is that you can do more cast per hour than I did, it's just as I said before, I was AFKing a lot while doing this. And the second thing that is linked to this is, if you're AFKing, your experience per cast is going to be lower on average because you're going to be hitting less monkeys overall than if you're paying attention. So again, keep in mind you can actually get more bang for your buck here if you are paying attention, but it's not going to be by a massive amount. Finally, note the GP to experience ratio, which is 3.74, which strange as it sounds is actually a pretty good ratio for a high level training method that also trains a second skill very quickly as well. As for the method itself, I'm not going to lie, it did hurt my soul just a little bit to know that I was basically throwing away money, but the results do speak for themselves and it was well worth doing with my time. I actually found it to be a more relaxing method than I thought it would be, it's super easy to do and really, really easy to camp there for an incredibly long period of time, so there isn't a lot of faffing about. And I also found, which I liked the most in this method, that you can actually AFK there for about 10 minutes straight if you have a high high enough prayer level, with high enough prayer bonuses, without having to worry at all, which means that this is a really good method for you if you like low effort training like I do. The only other thing to say about the method itself though is that it can be a bit annoying to manipulate the monkeys into a space so that you're always hitting 9 of them at once. Especially when you're AFKing, I stopped bothering trying to do this quite early on, because I realised it's just a lot of effort and in my opinion not necessarily worth the reward it brings. Basically it's not that it's hard to do, it's just that if you are going to constantly be positioning the monkeys to get the most experience you can out of every cast, you're going to be making this method far less AFK, which in my opinion isn't worth doing, but for some people it will be. And finally, here is a summary of everything I found doing this method. First of all, it's incredibly AFK as a method, with slightly lower experience the more you AFK, but it seems to be well worth it to do. Secondly, it's got a very good experience per hour ratio in both magic and hit points, and is basically unparalleled without using Ice Barrage instead. Thirdly, it's a very costly method, especially compared to other magic training methods that can actually pull in a profit, but because this is a late game method and the cost isn't too high, it's more acceptable to do. Also, the Kodai Wand is very worth it to use here, given that it reduces the supply cost by 15% and increases the damage you're putting out, and lets you auto cast ancient magic spells as well to boot. So I would recommend using that if you're doing this method. So overall basically you're paying a premium for fast AFK experience in the late game, and even as someone who is especially stingy I have to say that I can justify doing this myself. So with all of that covered, that is it for this video, so I do hope you enjoyed and found it helpful. And as always if there is anything else you'd like to see me cover, feel free to drop me a line down below and I will do my best to make it happen. Although I do have plans to do a 40 hour video that I am still currently working on, so do keep in mind that it might take me a bit longer than usual to get Get round 20 suggestions. Anyway though, that's it from me, so I hope you're all having a wonderful week in the run up to Christmas, and I will see you all next time. Bye guys!